Lenses. Am I right? What's going on guys, it's KY Nakai, the creative. And the last time we met up, we were talking about the 50 millimeter G Master F 1.2 lens. My first impressions after renting it for a couple days to do a climb project. Now, due to some of my other gear not getting enough love and getting a little bit jealous, we decided that we're gonna switch things up and we're gonna talk about another lens that stays in my bag. So today, this video is going to be about the 35 millimeter G Master F 1.4 lens and why I think it's a perfect lens if you're somebody that's photography, videography, and you're using something like the Sony a7 IV that just came out or something like I use my cinema camera, which is the FX6. All right, so we're gonna get the cosmetic things out of the way. The 35 millimeter G Master lens looks just like the 50 millimeter that we were talking about in the last video. It does have the manual aperture ring, so if you do wanna change your aperture on the fly and you can also click or de-click that aperture so if you need that haptic feedback or you want a smooth transition when you're changing your exposure that is an option that's for you another thing to note and the reason why i said that this was great for something like the a7 IV or the fx6 is because they now added a breathing compensation control so basically what happened is a lot of these G Masters, albeit they had incredibly high quality, it was great for photography, they were super sharp and they were really, really nice pieces of glass, they all suffered in some ways from focus breathing, which basically means that when you change your manual focus in to out or out to in, you did get a little bit of a zoom in bump, which throws people off. And you could also see it apparently inside of the autofocus features as well. So what they've done now is they've added a compensation control in the a7 IV and the FX6 that helps mitigate that to make things a heck of a lot easier. Making a lens like this an incredibly good lens for some of the newer cameras that have come out and some new cameras are going to be coming out in the near future. It's great autofocus being a native Sony lens, especially with the new tracking features that are available on the FX6 and the a7 IV. It pairs really, really well with some of the diffusion filters. So if you're somebody that uses a Tiffin Black Pro Mist or maybe using a Cinebloom, it does really well because the lens is inherently sharp, but you do get to get some of those highlights in your highlights while still having a great quality image and a great quality look. And last but not least is its low light capabilities. Now it is a 1.4 lens, which means that if you are in a low light situation or you're in a situation where you don't have control over the light and it might get darker or brighter based on the day, you're able to have that control with an f1.4 aperture, which is great for low light situations or if you really wanted to separate your subjects from the background and a lot of your shots and your images. But generally speaking, if I'm using a lens to create social media content, YouTube content, fitness and things like that, I will be turning to my 35 millimeter G Master lens. Now I know this channel is a lot about video, but this is also a great photography lens. Now for those of you guys that don't know, I do do cinematography, videography, content creation, but I do also do professional photography for brands and different clients. Clients. And I got to take this lens out in the very beginning. A lot of people refer to the 35 millimeter focal length as the Instagram lens because it gives you just enough compression that you can isolate your subjects, but it also gives you that nice wider field of view without being something that's overly wide like a 16 to 35 or a 24 millimeter lens on the wider ends. I use this a lot when I do professional photography for fitness clients. I'll also use it for some street photos and other things like that. But generally speaking, this is a lens that I turn to 95% of the time when I need something that's wide enough to get the scene, but not too wide that I'm taken out of it, but also not too close that my shots feel claustrophobic. Now there's two things that people do not like with this particular lens and it's its price and the focus breathing. Now the focus breathing at the point of this video, they have addressed because in some of the new cameras, they do have that focus breathing control that we mentioned beforehand. Now, some of the other cameras like the Sony a7S III or my FX3 don't have the ability to do that. Now, that being said, some people don't actually notice the focus breathing that's in there. It's one of those things that if you're shooting the footage, you might notice it a lot more. But if I'm a viewer that's watching it, it doesn't seem to bother me particularly too much. But I'd be lying to you and I'd be remiss to say that it doesn't exist and that there's an easy way to fix it on any of the cameras. Now, we're going to talk about price of the Sony 35mm G Master lens. Now, it currently sits at a $1,400 price tag US dollars, which is about $1,900 in Canadian. And that is more expensive than its other counterparts. It's about twice as much as its non G Master counterpart. It's about $400 more than the Zeiss 3514, which a lot of people have picked up before the 35 G Master came up. And it's also $500 more than its Sigma counterpart, which goes right back to the answer to the question that I had in the 50 millimeter video is why would somebody buy this lens? Now, the Sony G Master line is a line made for professionals. It's a pro line of lenses, and it's probably the most expensive things that you're going to add to your kit outside of some of the cameras that you're going to be buying. If you're somebody that's a hobbyist, if you're somebody that's just dabbling into it, I don't think that you should spend all of your money on investing in G Master lenses. Try out something like the Sony FE line, or maybe some of the Zeisses that are available, something that's a little bit cheaper until you're ready to take that next step. If you are a working professional and you are saving up to get really good glass and you want to have the best quality equipment when you're working on client projects, then getting the best quality lenses for your situation makes a lot of sense for you. And the 35 millimeter is there for you. It's one of the perfect lenses that you can do for all around photography, all around video, and generally speaking, all around content creation for the Sony system. But if 
if I want to keep five lenses, five focal lengths that I'm mostly going to use, I'm gonna save my money to make sure that I get the best possible options in those focal lengths. So I don't have to buy things twice and I can just buy them nice instead. That being said, if you guys wanna see reviews of any other types of gear, any other lenses and any other cameras that I might have in my bag or I might have in my kit, leave a comment down below. And also let me know what lenses are you guys using in your camera bags? I wanna know what the general consensus of what people are using or what the general consensus of what gear and technology and equipment that you guys are interested in using in the future that I might have or I might review somewhere in the future. That being said, this is KY Not Kai the Creative, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. See, I would never leave you out. I mean, it was just it was just a lens. It was just me renting it. It was just a fling. It was a couple days, and I just wanted to give my first impressions. You will always be the lens that stays in my camera bag, and don't worry about that. How much is that G Master lens again?